Another really tough unsolved problem is when siblings are having difficulty getting along with one another. Boy, is that an aggravating one for parents. De dealing with constant disagreements and fighting and sometimes physical aggression between siblings, no fun. And especially no fun is getting dragged into being a referee when you're the referee, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. Um, somebody got caught, but the other person was an equal contributor to the problem most of the time. You know, just like in football, it's the person who strikes back second who often gets the penalty flag thrown. This is a two to tango issue if there ever was one. And how are we going to solve it? Not by you being a referee. That, that is a losing proposition but instead by you doing plan B between the two siblings. Now, you know, often it's called sibling rivalry. Not sure why we would think the two siblings would disagree with each other any less than any other human beings would, but because they're kids, they may be having more difficulty solving it on their own, and that's where you come in. But in this case, you are a plan B facilitator. You don't have concerns to necessarily put on the table, you're the facilitator. You're going to help the two kids do plan B with each other. And beyond that, it's the same three steps. Uh, we're going to gather information from one sibling about his or her concern or perspective on the specific situation in which he or she is having difficulty getting along with his or her sibling. So you're going to have a long list of unsolved problems here related to sibling interactions because you don't want to assume that they're having difficulty watching TV together for the same reasons that they're having difficulty playing outside together, for the same reasons that they're having difficulty eating dinner together. Those are going to be three separate unsolved problems. So we're going to get the concerns of one of the kids on the table. We're then going to get the concerns of the other kid on the table. Then and only then, once we have the concerns of both parties entered into consideration, are we ready for the invitation step where we are trying to come up with a solution that addresses the concerns of both parties. This is also an instance in which you may not have plan B start off with both parties in the same room together. If your kids aren't very good at talking with each other, if they're going to start disagreeing with each other, saying that the other one is wrong, then you want to gather one of their concerns separately, the other one's concerns separately. You may even want to explore potential solutions separately. And then, just like in the signing of a treaty between two politicians, you want to bring them together when you feel like you have a solution in place that's going to address the concerns of both parties obviously with a great deal of their input. Now, one last little point on this one. When there are really serious, aggressive interactions going on between two siblings, then we have to take steps to make sure that they are at least both safe. And sometimes, the more siblings are together, the more opportunities there are for them not to get along. I know parents dream that their siblings will get along. Parents love to have their siblings be together on the hope that at least in this instance they will get along with each other. But if you think that there's pretty decent odds that even if they start off a particular interaction getting along with each other, that it's going to end in conflict, I don't like them odds, especially when there's physical or verbal aggression involved. In those instances, sometimes we have to help families and kids do plan B over limiting their time together. The unsolved problem would be difficulty getting along with each other, especially after spending a lot of time together. In those instances, while many families put a lot of hard working into thinking about what we're going to do together, in this instance, plan B is actually focused on what are we going to do when we are apart? Being together becomes something that only happens if we feel like we're going to get along together. It's only something that happens if we feel like we have solutions in place that are going to set the stage for getting along. I don't like taking any chances on physical aggression. I don't like taking any chances on verbal aggression. If they're not ready to get along together, 
we may have to limit the amount of time that they spend together. Sometimes I have to help families put a lot of thought into what it's going to look like to not be together, which is a very different frame of mind for many parents, but one that can be very important, especially if there's a lot of physical or verbal aggression between the two kids.